Thank you so much. The shepherds were keeping watch by their flocks at night. They were not washing their socks, as some have said. No, they were watching. It was their job to watch, to watch the sheep, to make sure nothing was going to happen. What were they looking for? Well, they were looking for wild animals that might sneak in and kill the sheep. They were looking to see if any lambs might wander off that need to be go, gone and gathered back in. They were looking and watching to see if there might be a thief trying to steal one of the lambs. They were busy folks. It was a job that they had to stay up all night and pay attention. We're kind of like the shepherds. We're busy with life, aren't we? Many of us are busy going to work, trying to make a living. I remember the first time I met my friend Joe, I asked him where he worked. He said, I work at Carolina Mirror. And I said, what do you do, make mirrors? He said, oh, we make money. <laughs> he said, mirrors are just the way we make the money. And that's all of us, isn't it? We all do this and that, but we need the money. We need it to provide a living, to take care of our children, to keep the household together, to feed our families. We're busy, aren't we? We're even busy when we come to church. We have Sunday school and folks have studied their lessons and teachers are ready to teach. Our choir has rehearsed and they're ready for worship. The bulletins have been printed. The ushers are in place and the committees have met and made all of the plans. Baptist churches are busy places. Did you hear the nursery rhyme, Mary had a little lamb and it would have been a sheep? but it joined a Baptist church and died from lack of sleep? <laughs> We're busy, aren't we? We are so tied up with life. And so the shepherds were busy. They were doing their job, and God showed up in the form of an angel. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always pictured this angel up in the sky shouting down at the shepherds, but... You know, if you read Scripture closely, sometimes you find out what's in your mind is not exactly what it says. If you read this morning, you saw that the shepherd came and stood, the angel came and stood among the shepherds. And the glory of God shone around them, but the shepherd was right there in their midst, right in front of them. They could not miss this angel. And then later on, the heavenly host came and sang as well. And scripture says that the shepherds were terrified. Do you ever wonder about the sheep? I've always wondered about the sheep. Were they afraid when the shepherds were afraid? Or did they recognize that this was God's presence and maybe the sheep were just at peace? I don't know, but I bet the shepherds stopped watching the sheep for a moment and looked at the angel. <laughs> Wouldn't you? You see... We're busy, aren't we? We're busy like the shepherds, doing our jobs, taking care of our families, doing all of these things. And what would it take for God to get our attention? Would it take an angel standing right in front of you? When do you recognize Christmas? I mean, when does Christmas come upon you? And you kind of say, ah, it's Christmas Maybe it's when we did Christmas Joy and we helped other families. That was a wonderful time for the life of our church. Or maybe it was at the Cantado last week. I was watching the children, our shepherds, and Mary and Joseph and our angels. And I saw little Rachel. She was smiling and she was waving at you, Jan Wirtz. She kept looking and waving and waving at her preschool teacher. And then looked over and I saw little James, a little shepherd boy, and he was moving to the music because he loves music. All of the children were so precious and it just kind of filled my heart with joy. And I thought, this is Christmas. God is with us. But God is always present. The glory of the Lord is always shining about us. It's just that we don't always see it. One of my favorite authors is Gerald May. Gerald May was a psychiatrist, but he also studied religion. In fact, he was a bit of a mystic. He wrote many 
uh, books about faith and psychiatry and how they cross and about how our faith can help us in all aspects of our life. Gerald May, towards the end of his life, was battling cancer. He wrote and he said that the nearer he approached death, the more he saw God's hand in life. I thought that was interesting. I was particularly drawn to one of his writings that said, I just wanted to walk up to people and shake them and say, don't you know that you are aglow with the light of God? You see, he had this way of seeing life, and as he looked at others, he saw how precious they were, and he saw God in their life. He saw something more that most of us see. Oh, every once in a while we see it. When there is a baby born, how can you not see the grace of God? It's one of my favorite things to do is to go to the hospital after there's a birth of a child in our church and I get to go and hold that baby and have a prayer and you just feel God's grace. Sometimes we see it when someone comes down the aisle and they confess Christ as the Lord and Savior and they experience a rebirth and they're baptized into this fellowship of faith known as First Baptist and we see the glory of God in our lives. Sometimes it's as simple as taking a walk in the woods or going out at night and looking up and seeing the stars. God is all around us and sometimes God shows up in the strangest of places. I'll never forget some years ago I went to make a visit that I really didn't want to make. I had to go to a nursing home. My friend Shirley was there. Shirley had been battling leukemia for quite some time, and they'd been keeping her at home, and yet she had fallen and broken her pelvis, and they could not keep her at home anymore. And she was at the nursing home, and I needed to go see her, but I didn't want to see her there. I was afraid that she might be discouraged. And so I went. But I went on the day I really had to. I went on the day that was her birthday. And so I went and I walked in her room and she did seem a little bit down and I tried to have a little bit of conversation with her. And just about the time I thought, I don't know if we can keep this up, in walked Barbara. Barbara was a lady in our church that loved to visit. Barbara had in her hands a cake in one hand and a bunch of balloons in the other. And came in with a smile and said, Shirley, happy birthday. And a party broke out. Nurses and aides began to come in the room to eat the cake with us. Shirley's daughter, Jamie, came in and brought some presents, and she bubbled with life. And Shirley, who was an artist, said to me, I wish I had my oils. I would paint this picture. I wonder if we see God breaking into our lives, even in the strangest places. The shepherds who are out watching in the fields all of a sudden see the glory of God around them and hear the message of Christmas. What do you see in your world? Are you busy looking at everything and not seeing God in your life? Open your eyes for God is all around you. The shepherds did more than see, though. They also listened. It's one thing to say, I think God is at work. It's another thing to stop and to listen for God. Uh, do you remember in the book of Samuel, little Samuel is sleeping there in the temple, and he hears a voice, and he gets up, and he goes and asks, Eli, did you call me? And Eli says, no, go lay down. I didn't call you. And it happens a second time and a third time. And finally, Eli says, go and lie down. And if you hear the voice of God again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Boy, we could all read that every day, couldn't we? Do we ever say, speak, Lord, for we are stopping long enough to listen? I remember one Sunday when my son was just a preschooler. He used to walk out with me as I went out to do the benediction. And then he would stand beside me and shake hands with the folks. And that was usually what he did. But one Sunday, we were greeting the folks. And J.D. kept pulling on my shirt sleeve. And I kind of shook him off and said, J.D., not now. Not now. Not now. 
Karen, who was a preschool teacher, came through and JD was still pulling and he said, she said to me, Pastor, why don't you stop and see what your son wants? He's just as important as anyone else in this church. And so I stopped and I listened and we found out what he needed. I think sometimes God is tugging on our shirt sleeves. God is tugging on the strings to our hearts. God is speaking to us and yet we're not listening. The shepherds not only saw these angels, but they listened to the message. And when they finally heard it, the shepherds did something even more. The shepherds went as the angels told them to do. Sometimes we even see God and we hear God, but do we actually act on what God is calling us to do? I don't know about you all, but I bet some of the men in the sanctuary find the same thing I find occasionally. Do you find little notes around the house? Sometimes I'll find a little note on the refrigerator and it'll say, don't forget to unload the dishwasher. Now, I know why that note is there because the night before, Valerie said to me, honey, I'm going to run the dishwasher. Can you unload it in the morning? And I said, oh, yes. And she'll say, well, do you see the dishes? Yeah, I see them. Do you hear what I'm asking? Oh, I hear what you're asking me. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. But the note's there because she knows me. <laughs> she knows I said I heard her and I saw the dishes, but I forget. And I don't always do what I say I'm going to do. And so sometimes we need these little notes. Scripture says, the shepherd said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that was taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. I think those shepherds did not want to go home and explain to their wives that an angel came and stood among them and declared that there was a miracle down in Bethlehem. And then their wives said, what did you do next? And they said, well, we just watched a sheep. <laughs> uh-uh. That won't fly, will it? They talked this thing over. They said, hey, somebody might call us to task one day. Let's go down and see what's happening. <laughs> and so they went down and they found the baby and Mary and Joseph you know, God is always a God on go. Look at Scripture. Adam and Eve are placed in the garden. They're told to go and to tend the garden. Abraham hears the voice of God, and the voice of God says, Go to a place I will show you, and Abraham gets up and goes. In the book of Judges, God comes to the judges like Gideon and says, Arise, go and fight for me in my name. Moses was out in the wilderness and he saw a burning bush and the voice said, go, go down to Egypt, I hear my people. The prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah and the rest all say to the people, God is telling us to go and to do and they go and they prophesy and Jesus in the great commandment tells us to go into all of the world and proclaim and to make disciples. God is a God on the go. Where is God calling you to go? What action is God calling you to take this week? Maybe it's to do like the shepherds did, to share what God is doing in your life. You see, the shepherds also shared. I mean, why wouldn't they? It's a great story. I mean, who wouldn't talk about angels showing up and telling you to go down and see this baby that was born. I mean, you would tell the story. It would be one that would be burning within you. You'd want to go and share it. So many times I've had people tell me, you know, I remember a sermon you preached two or three years ago. And I'll say, oh, what do you remember? And they say, well, I don't really remember the sermon. I remember the story you told. Stories stick with us. I remember hearing a story of a pastor that decided to skip church one Sunday. He skipped church because he wanted to play golf. He made a hole in one that day and he couldn't tell anyone. <laughs> that story just burned inside of him. Every once in a while, God comes into our lives. But why don't we tell the story? Why don't we share the story of our faith? Is it because 
we're not watching, we're not listening, we're not doing, and so we have no story of faith to share? Or is it because we are afraid to tell their story that someone might make fun of us or they may not listen? You have a story to tell, and your story is a story God has given to you to share the people you encounter in your life are people who need to hear good news of great joy and you have that joy within you, why would you not rejoice and share that story? The musical Mame is a funny little musical, isn't it? It has a story of Patrick Dennis, who's a little boy whose parents die and he is sent off to New York to live with his eccentric aunt Mamie, Mame, Auntie Mame. The depression hits, and Mame, who has a lot of money, loses it all. And a depression hits upon the family, and they're all sad. And you know the song where Mame comes out and says, Haul out the holly, put up the tree before my spirits fall again. Fill up the stockings, I may be rushing things, but deck the halls again now. For we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Candles in the window, carols in the spinet. Yes, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. We need a little Christmas right now. And Patrick says to his crazy aunt, it's not Christmas. And she just keeps on singing, keeps on pulling out the decorations, keeps saying we need something to lift our spirits. We need to rejoice despite whatever is going on around us. I think we all need a little Christmas. We need to recognize. Like the shepherds, we need to see God at work. We need to hear God's call upon our lives. We need to take action and to go, and we need to share that story and rejoice in what God is doing in our lives. Folks, tomorrow is Christmas, and we will celebrate and rejoice but we need a little Christmas each and every day of our lives.